Okay, hello, welcome to Airsoft Pro Tips. Now, I said in the last video that this time around we'd be making a battle song. Sadly, we're going to have to put that video on hold for a couple of weeks while I get a few bits and pieces together for that. But, in the meantime, I'm going to be showing you... We're going to be talking through gas blowback weapons. So, here we've got a few. We've got Colt Python Revolver, WE Luger, WE1911, and we've also got a KWA, I believe, Mac 10, Mac 11, Mac 11. So we're going to be going through basically the principles about these guns, talking about how they actually work, talking about how to maintain them, if it's your first gun or if you just need a bit of advice on how to keep it running. Now, first things first, I'm going to pop the mag out. Now... As you can see, we've got this little bit of rubber here. Now, the way this actually works, you've got your little release valve on the back. And in here, you've got a little pin which pushes against that, releases a tiny little bit of gas. Now, that gas then goes into the barrel and actually is what makes the BB fire. But we'll talk more about that as we go through. Now, just one thing I'd like to point out before we start. I'm not going to be stripping these down completely. I'm just going to be field stripping them. Um, if you want to see a complete takedown, there's lots of videos which show how these completely come apart. Watch one of those. I'm not going to be stripping these completely. Also, I'm not going to be taking this one apart at all because it's a bit of a pain in the ass. I've only got it for reference reasons. So just bear that in mind. So if you're waiting to see me take this down, it's not going to happen in this video. You know, find one which I do actually take one of these. Sorry, I'm not going to be taking one of these apart. But like I say, these are going to be field stripping it. So... Nice and simply, let's start with the 1911 because it's a good example of pretty much all the things which we want to talk about in this episode. So, we're going to be popping out the retaining pin for the slide and slide comes straight off. Now, that in itself is pretty much all of the worky bits for the gun. That and this little bit here. I mean, because here... As you can see, we've got the magwell. Can you see that on camera? Yeah, there you go. Okay. And other than that, this trigger actually, sorry, the hammer doesn't actually do anything. It doesn't really make contact with this, except for this bit when it slides back. But if you've got one of these, take it apart, have a look. You'll see what I mean. So, here you go. In here, we've got a few rather important components. We've got our spring guard. We've got these bushings and finally we've got the barrel itself. Now the barrel itself contains this little lever here which is actually our hop up, hop up situated just in there. Now I'm not going to be going through how the hop up exactly works in this video, I'm going to be doing a couple of videos later on which will go through more about those kind of things but for the time being just bear in mind this is where it is in the gun. Now, the spring, unlike an AEG, which is actually your main source of power, this is simply just to return this back to the, its forward state. So, for example, if we pop this back on now and cock it back, it's not going to pull forward again because there's nothing holding it in. We'd have to push it forward manually. So, basically, that's all it does. Now, you've got this little bit here. Now, this is actually what causes your blowback... Whoops. This is what's actually causing your blowback mechanism. This is essentially where all the power's going. Because as you can see, you've got this little hole. This little hole just here. Hopefully you can see that on camera. Now this is actually what's doing all the... Well, this is where your gun's drawing its power from. Because your mag is sitting there somewhere like that. And this hole is lining up with this. So when you fire, gas comes out of there, goes into that hole. This goes like that, pushes forward, but gas also comes out of this little hole here. Which hopefully, again, you can see, but you probably can't. Again, if you've got one and you're doing this as a bit of a guide, take a look yourself. you get an idea. And then that, in turn, pushes the BB out the barrel along the inner brass barrel, which is what this bit is, because you can probably see there's actually a separate barrel on the inside of this, what we call outer barrel. Now... With this lined up inside, you can kind of get a bit of an idea of how it works. So as it fires, it pulls back and then 
pushes forward again and this bit is actually what's making contact with your mag and pulling a new BB out across the across the feeding ramp or up the feeding ramp and actually chambering each new round. Now again the best way to see this is actually to put some BBs in your mag, don't put any gas in, put it back and actually watch the mechanism, see it feeding yourself. Now, in terms of actually looking after one of these, in terms of maintaining it, there's only a couple of things you need to do. Now, first thing, first and most important thing is make sure this is well oiled. Make sure all this inside in your piston here. Make sure your spring guide. Any contact surfaces, especially this mechanism here. And probably not your bowel because you don't really want to get too much on the bowel, but I'll explain why in a moment. Make sure it's all oiled, make sure you've got lots of friction. Um, also, it doesn't hurt to give it a routine clean. As you can see, my bits are quite shiny on here because I've actually polished it using a polishing wheel. But if I give it a bit of a rub, you can probably see a bit of dirt. You might be able to see that. I don't know if that's going to come out on camera. Um, it happens. It happens as you fire. Um, mostly because it's silicon silicon oil or whatever oil you've used is just going a bit gunky and it gets a bit manky uh, also you get paint chip and all kinds of things come off but take it apart give it a quick clean that's one of the major things to do and like I say if your gun's getting a bit old like mine is I mean I've had this for what four years now it's been with me every single game um, you might want to give these surfaces a bit of a clean just the less resistance you've got in the gun the more efficiently it's going to fire simple as that really also it doesn't hurt to give it just a spray down in there don't worry too much about cleaning out this mag well because you know to be honest you're not going to get enough gunk in there to completely stop up your mag so don't worry too much about that now in terms of routine maintenance this is all you need to do the one thing I would say though is make sure you spray a little bit of silicon on there just because it will keep that rubber nice and soft, stop it going hard, stop it perishing and just eventually falling apart inside the gun. Okay, so other things to consider. You've got your safety, again, could use a bit of oil. This bit back here, your um, uh, what they call beaver tail. Again, you want to give that a bit of a clean. Now, it doesn't matter if you've got a 1911 or if you've got a um, Beretta, SIG, principle is pretty much the same. Now, with all all of these kind of guns, you know, they most of the, most of them work on this principle. Hence why we got the Luger out. So, let's talk about the Luger quickly. Notice the mag, very, very similar. Okay, it's very similar. It's got the same button, same uh, nozzle at the top, same way you put gas in, and as I say, most gas blowbacks are pretty much the same in that regard. Now, the action's a little bit different because it snaps up rather than like the 1911 pulls back. But to take this one down, a little bit different because you've got this little plate that comes off, and then the actual slide detaches. It's all a bit weird, but it's just the way the gun was designed. Now internally wise it's a little bit different but uh, you don't really need to worry too much about that because the same rules apply. If you're maintaining a gun like this, give a bit of a silicon spray down here, clean these contact surfaces and again you've got the barrel the front and you've got the piston at the back. Now much like, much like this where you've got that piston at the back chambering each new round, you've got the same idea. Oops. Got the same idea with this, because but this time this arm here is actually what's feeding the rounds in. And again, if you've got one of these, take it apart, have a look, because you'll see what I'm talking about. It's going to be much, much easier than just looking on this video. Now, in and out of battle. So we're going to refer back to the old 1911. You can see we've got this bit here, this little gold bit. Now the BB is actually travelling along inside of that, and it's what we call our brass barrel. Now, you might not necessarily be made of brass. More commonly, they're being made out of aluminium. Some of them are even made out of some form of light steel, just presumably because of wear and tear. I don't know. I've never known a uh, barrel wear out, but uh, I suppose if you're playing enough, it could potentially. But anyway, this is what's actually travelling the BB along it. Now, your outer barrel is purely for show. This can be any shape, any size. 
the inner barrel is what makes the difference. So you may want to stick a tiny, tiny little bit of silicon down here, but that's about it. Now I keep saying silicon oil. Why do I keep saying silicon oil? And it's simple. Other oils can damage your rubbers. So I'm talking about all these bits all up in here. I'm talking about your hop up. This piston actually has a rubber seal around it too. Um, well, stop gas escaping. I'm also talking about these nozzles on your mags. You don't want to use just any oil. Make sure you use something along the lines of silicon oil, or at least make sure you use an oil which is fairly inert because else your rubbers are going to, they can disintegrate. They will literally disintegrate inside your gun and you really, really do not want that. Okay, so I'm going to clear this stuff away and then we'll take a look at the Mac 11. These two are now back together, so Mac 11 now. Now, the Mac 11, you'll find as we take it apart, works on a very, very similar principle to the other blowback pistols we just looked at. So, first of all, I can pop off the silencer, which I think I've done a little bit too tight, but never mind. Pop out the retaining pin. By the way, you're probably asking why I've actually bothered getting screwdrivers and stuff. They're purely for the sake of if a component gets stuck. So if you see me refer to them, or if you see them at the corner and think, well, I didn't use them for the entire episode, although I suspect I'm about to use them. Yeah, this is why. So it's handy to have something with you. It doesn't necessarily have to be, have to be a screwdriver, but um, it is useful to have something just to pull out little pins, especially if they get stuck. So we've taken out these two retaining pins. There you go. And we've got the actual internal housing. And again, much like these guns, very, very similar. You've got your worky bits. This is what's giving you your fire selection, full, or alternatively automatic, where it's just sliding backwards and forwards. Or the other way around. Also it's what's giving us our safety mechanism. You probably can't see anything happening on camera but basically bits are moving down there and it's just doing what it needs to do. But what we're really interested in is this bit. So as you can see we've got the piston which is actually what's sliding backwards and forwards. Chambering each round into the hole there which is our barrel into the hopper firing it forward but again the principle is basically the same. You've got this little piston here, you've got a nozzle up there, and when the mag's in, mag's touching that nozzle, and you've got your nozzle there, which is actually what's feeding it in directly. Whereas most of these have got a feeding arm and a feeding ramp, this actually lines up with the BB and pushes it into the hole. And like I say, gas comes in there, pushes that, goes back, does the recoil action, but then pulls forward again, chambers the next round in. Well actually this one doesn't because it actually fires from an open bolt, it fires from back, but you get the idea. Okay, jump cut. Sorry about that, the battery on my camera died. Okay, so let's address a common question. How do I modify my gas blowback pistol, SMG, whatever it is you particularly have? Now, truth of the matter is, there's not a lot you can do with a gas blowback compared to what you can do with an AG, but we're talking about, we'll talk about AGs at a later point. Now, really, you have a few options available. Except for external modifications, you know, making it feel a bit better in your hand, you've got different body kits, so on and so forth, if, say, you didn't want to Mac a, a um, 1911 but wanted some other obscure pistol that they don't make a full kit of, but they make a shell for, whatever doesn't really make any difference um, to the operation. We're talking operational mods. Now, one of the first most obvious ones is getting a longer barrel. Okay, a longer barrel extends your range a tiny bit. Not a massive amount, to be honest. Uh, it really, really is, you know, when you're talking about going from that kind of length brass barrel to then going to that kind of length brass barrel, you're not going to notice enough of a difference unless you're doing, you know, professional target shooting or whatever. You know, you're not going to see much of an effect on a man-sized target at maybe 50 foot or so. Um, but like I say, that said, you know, lots of external things you can do. You can change the safeties, make them a bit easier on the hand. Where you've got your 
slide locking mechanisms, stuff like that. You can change all that around. Just make it a bit easier on you as an operator. But like I say, internally, internally it comes down to one of two things. Now, I've talked about the spring guide. Okay, one of the most obvious and easy things you can do is change your spring guide. Have a more well, have a harder spring. Now, harder spring means um, faster cycling action in that when this pulls back, it'll go back to how it was much, much faster. Now, it makes probably no difference on the pistols except you'll find you have a very slightly higher trigger response, but I'll be honest, on these kind of gas blowback pistols, the trigger response is pretty fast anyway, so you probably don't need to worry too much about that. But on something like this, you may actually see quite a big difference because it's going to be moving significantly faster than it would otherwise. Now, a couple of little things to bear in mind if that is something you're considering. First of all, it's very, very difficult to get a spring which fits your good exactly and it will need to fit exactly because if you have even a little bit of a gap or it's too um, highly... Uh, compressed already before it even compresses naturally well or compresses as the gun cycles you're going to get all kinds of problems you're going to get it jamming it's just not going to do what you want it to to do or more to it, it's not going to do what it's supposed to do now that said as well you may find you've got too hard a spring and the gun won't cycle at all which is very very common so my advice would be do not touch the spring it's not worth doing I mean, if you really, really want to go to those lengths and say, I really need a faster cycle rate, not that you really would on something like this, because these kind of guns are already pretty fast anyway, uh, that would be one of your major port of calls. So, what else can you do? I mean, really, other than that, there's only a few things... There's only a few things that you can really do to it. Um, this hole here, in the cylinder... You can make that a little bit higher, sorry, a little bit bigger, drill it out, cut it out, whatever. And that's going to give you a very slightly higher FPS. But again, very, very risky because the more gas you've got coming out of here, the less gas you've, less gas you've got going back into the gun to help you, um, your cycling rate. And unlike a spring where if you change the spring, you can change it back, that's not so easy. So if you're going to do that, if you want to get a modified piston or what we call a bore up piston, buy one don't try and just cut your own because like I say once it's done if you find it doesn't work you're stuck with it unless you're then going to go buy one but like I say it's not worth buying unless you actually have a spare so it's not worth doing yourself unless you've got a spare it's better to buy one now the only other thing you can really do is get what's called a high release valve now you can see we've got these kind of valves now these are pretty standard on most pistols some have a very slightly higher rate one some have a slightly less rate one but really what they're doing is a changing how much gas comes out of here. Now, the higher the rate of gas, or more to it, how much gas you've actually got leaving, because basically the hole is bigger, will make a difference to how powerful the gun is because it's changing how much gas is going into your cylinder, thus how much gas is actually going out of your barrel. So, essentially you get a higher FPS. A higher FPS. Now, for some guns, that may be fine. For things like this, which actually, I think when this was last cornered, it was shooting at something like 250 on its highest of the three chronos. And that's quite low for any gun. But sights can be a bit funny about pistols. Often they'll say, well, it's a sidearm, it should be lower than 350 FPS or around the 300 mark. But some places don't consider them one of the weapons, so they'll let you have them ridiculously high FPS. If you're going to go down that route again, check first. It's like I keep on, keep on saying, check first before you do any mods. It just makes more sense. So, finally then, let's talk about the revolver. Now, the revolver is very, very different to the other gas blowbacks I own. Now, this particular one is double action, so you can either put it back and fire it, or you can just pull the trigger with no need to pull back the hammer. Now the actual mechanism of this is pretty much the same on all of these gas pistols. Some of them work slightly differently but most of them are pretty much the same. 
in that you've got a cylinder which you fill full of BBs or alternatively some of them actually have bullets that you can take out and put a single BB in. Uh, I don't have one of those, this one holds something like four in each cylinder. Um, but the actual gas uh, reservoir is stored here and then all of the mechanism for firing is all stored up in here. So as you put it back, bang, releases gas, gas goes through there, fires it and just directly out of the barrel. So nice and simple. Now a few things to bear in mind with these kind of weapons. Um, they don't work very well in the cold. So if you're going to be owning one of these it's well worth giving it a routine so giving it to, that's routine maintenance during the winter possibly more often than you would do it during the summer because during the summer these guns are going to be working really efficiently your gas is going to be working really nicely and well your gas is going to be working with a lot of power so your guns you're not going to really notice any difference if they get a bit gunked up I mean this one's quite this one really does need a clean but um, during the winter months when your gas is less efficient when your guns are less efficient because of the cycling and so forth you're going to find them jamming a lot more often and you're going to find that little tiny bit more efficiency because you've cleaned them is going to make a really big difference. Okay, so that's it for this episode of Vessel Pro Tips and next time we're going to be taking apart an AEG.